Can we talk about the style of the hotel? Yeah. Okay. All right. The hotel was built in 1896, and uh, it's a Queen Anne style. The way you know it's a Queen Anne style is because it had... Let me do it again. <laughs> The way that you know it's a Queen Anne style is simply because it has curved porches. When you see these rounded features uh, in the architecture, that's what makes it a Queen Anne porch and what makes it Queen Anne Victorian. Let me talk working? about the bedroom for just one second. Yeah, okay, cool. Right. Yeah. Staying here is a little bit like staying at grandma's house. And so this is like a great big grandma's house. And we tried uh, hard to make all the bedrooms really cozy and comfortable and, and fun. And so sometimes I just sleep in the different rooms just for fun to see what it feels like. And every room has a little bit of a different feel. My sister Joyce uh, and my brother-in-law Richard actually run the uh, bed and breakfast here. And uh, they, they seem to be having a great time with it. And so uh, that makes me smile, makes me happy because it, it really gives them something to do because they were just like everybody else. They worked in factories their whole life. And when the factories closed down, what, did, what do we do now? And so they, they really didn't have anything to do now. And so uh, but by doing this project, this gave them something to do. And so that made me very happy. And the, the hotel really does have some spirits like, um, um, I'm a, a person that, that does thing, uh, spiritual things for a living. I'm a known psychic around the world and I do a lot of shows on the Strip in Vegas and, and um, all over the country. Uh, do a lot of radio, do a lot of TV stuff and you know being here um, I see spirits uh, in the hotel and which is very common for me but all of a sudden other people started seeing the spirits too. We would have guests that would you know, be a little freaked out because they would see uh, this lady that had slick black hair that was kind of slicked back and she would appear and then sort of disappear. And um, this has happened many, many, many times. And so after a while, uh, we, we really figured out it was uh, uh, Deborah Leach, who is the original uh, owner of the hotel. In the very beginning, it's a railroad hotel. She was Angus, Angus Leach's wife. And so uh, she seems to visit, and I think she approves of what we're doing. Well, I started discovering different spiritual dimensions, I think, when I was a little boy. I think when I grew up on my grandmother's farm a little ways away down the street a couple of miles, I, I was able to see what I believe my dog was seeing when I was a little kid because I realized my dog sometimes would love certain people and dislike others. And I kind of had that same sense. And, uh, and I, I, was, I was able to see lights around people uh, that I later interpreted and realized those were angels. And I was also able to see dark energies that I later interpreted and realized those were demons. And so uh, it didn't take long to sort it out. If you can count the two, you would have angels here or demons there. And just because somebody has a demon doesn't mean they're bad. It just means they had a demon. And uh, uh, I think we all have demons. If you meditate a certain way, everybody can see heaven and actually see all the dimensions. It's not hard, it's easy. Everybody can do what I do. I've never met a person that I couldn't work with for a little while and teach them how to see spiritually, see spiritually like I can. You know, I, I have a, a, a fun time. A lot of times I'm out doing shows on the road and I have a, a downtime where I'm a little bored. And so I love to shop. And so I'll go out and I'll buy things. And so uh, with doing the hotel, it was really great. Uh, suddenly there would be a tractor trailer load of stuff show up that would be different architectural salvage pieces I bought to work on the hotel or uh, different things, fountains. We have a, a, a giant fountain, it's 17 feet tall. Actually, I have two of those. One of them's up and one of them we're working on a new garden actually for next year. This is my favorite spot. This is actually my favorite spot in uh, the hotel. It's the gardens. The Rose Garden is just a, a very peaceful thing. And once I uh, did the Rose Garden, I actually realized I created this energy vortex. I'd come out here and I would feel all healed up. And uh, even being psychic, 
I would come out and I would see angels, I would experience different kind of healing energies. And, and so I think a lot of other people have felt the same thing and been able to see things like, sort of like I do. It's a great place to just rest and meditate. Let your mind go. I, I think what helped create the, the energy vortex around the fountain which was this area was very suppressed and they'd closed the factories down and stuff. And here's this crazy eccentric nut, me, who came in and decided to put a 17 foot tall fountain in the middle of this giant rose garden just because. A garden is a place that I think you, you learn to really appreciate. You, you have a garden just so you can appreciate it. That's it. And, and uh, this is an area, Star is an area where people really appreciate each other. They really do. There's a sense of community here. Uh, there's a sense of small town here. And uh, there's really a strong spirit that exists here. And so this beautiful sense of spirit and sense of, sense of, uh, of really oneness with each other uh, it is here. And I think the garden sort of brought it back to life. I think a lot of people can feel it. You know, I'm called the psychic because I don't think there's a, uh, another word, you know, that's, but I'm really not a psychic. Uh, a psychic is someone who uh, is, so, I, I always picture a palm reader. Uh, I'm not a palm reader. Uh, I'm, I'm many different things. And over the years, I've, I've always tried to learn how to use and expand on my spiritual gifts. Uh, my biggest passion is working with autistic children. I work with a lot of autistic kids. And um, I bumped into this quite by accident. A lady came to see me, and she came to see me for a session in Beverly Hills, and, and she had um, two autistic children. She had a little four-year-old boy on one arm and a little two-year-old boy on the other. And, and uh, uh, both of these little guys were cute as a button, but they were both autistic, and they never said a word. And she said, Gary, I, 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 I heard you do amazing things. Please, heal my children. Let them speak. And I was like, oh God, right? Because I didn't have a clue. And um, uh, it was interesting because I, as, as, I, as I really just tried to help her and do what, what she was wanting me to do, uh, I could see the blocks that was keeping uh, you know, one, her older, her four-year-old from speaking. And, and I, I, I worked with his energy and talked to his angels and, and uh, cleared his energy, basically. And, uh, and uh, I said, you know, I told him, I said, if you could say something to your mom, she would really be happy. And he said, I love you, Mom. Oh, no, I, I tell you, I know exactly. I can explain that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do. <clears throat> well, with, see, I figured this out because autistic children really see things like I can see things. They see things in layers. They see things in dimensions. See, I can see things in dimensions. I can, of course, talk to dead people. Uh, I can see angels. And I see things in layers. See, when I'm looking at a person even, I don't see what everybody else sees with their eyes. I, I see something different. You know, I see something very different. And so autistic uh, children can see the same thing I see. And then some, because they're far more spiritually gifted than me. And they're usually, I find them up in the cosmos somewhere doing some job for God. And their physical body is down here anchored, but their real intelligence or, or intellect is actually in the spiritual dimensions. And I have to clear their physical bodies and their spiritual intellect then will join their body. And when that happens, uh, it's magic because they start talking instantly. And it's really crazy to see this process. I think that, that this is a place that's going to really attract a lot of young people. We just got to... We, we got we to gotta create some things in, in an artist community that gives young people things to do. And so as soon as we have a few little things to do, I, I think we're going to see Star become a, a, a brand new youthful star. I, I've always entertained my whole life. And uh, so it's easy for me to figure out how could we entertain people? You know, like what are we going to do here? And, uh, and so uh, with being an entertainer, I think it's just a natural thing that, uh, that that's, what, that's what I do. But I think that's my mission here. I think my mission here is to figure out how to entertain the people in Star. Mm-hmm.
Mm-hmm.